All right, so the topic of this lesson is absolute value inequalities. And absolute value inequalities are really just exactly what they sound like. They're a combination between absolute value equations and inequalities, where inequalities give us a range of values. You know, we had a, we'd have a number line and we'd, we'd graph a bunch of values in one direction or another. X can be anything greater than something, or X can be anything less than something else. Um, and whereas with absolute values, we'd have two different possibilities. Maybe we'd have you know, one number graphed at a negative value and one number graphed at a positive value. Yeah? An absolute value inequality combines the two. We have a number graphed somewhere and then everything shaded in one direction from it, and another number graphed somewhere else and everything shaded in another direction from it. So an absolute value inequality is just the combination of an absolute value equation and a regular inequality. So let's see how this pans out here with the question sent in by Nassim. He wanted a little help with graphing the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 8. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice to know ahead of time with absolute value inequalities is that there's only really two possibilities. Either it's going to look like this when you graph it. You're going to exclude some section from the center or from somewhere along the middle of your number line. or it's going to only include the numbers in a certain section on your number line where you'd be shaded in between them. And that, that's pretty consistent where if you have a value that's greater than, in other words, if, you're, if your expression says um, uh, y minus 2 is greater than something else, then it's going to be this direction here. So if you're greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to go in opposite directions. If you are less than or less than or equal to, you're going to be graphed in between two values. So if we look at what Nassim has here, he has a less than. So we know that his expression is going to be between two different values. All the numbers x can be will be between two different numbers. So let's see what those two numbers are. If we were to assume that x minus 2 was to stay positive, so the positive version of this, then we would just need the numbers that worked for x minus 2 is less than 8. So we're not changing anything here. We would just assume the absolute value kept them negative. If that's the case, then x can be anything less than 10. Because if we take 10 minus 2, we get 8. So if x is anything smaller than 10, it's going to be less than 8. So that's one of our values there. x is less than 10. Unfortunately, we can only go down so far. Because if we get down too far negative, then we're going to be a bigger number in here than 8. And when we take the absolute value of negative 8, we're going to get 8 again. So the other possibility is that x minus 2 needs to still be bigger than negative 8. So it can't be smaller than, I mean, it has to be smaller than 8, but it has to be less negative or bigger than negative 8. So if we solve this inequality here, we get x is greater than negative 6. So the smallest value we can have is negative 6. And this is where our range of values comes in. As long as x isn't more negative than negative 6, then it won't get to be more positive when we take that absolute value. It won't get to be more positive than 8 when we're done. And as long as it doesn't start out bigger than a positive 10, when we subtract 2 from it, it won't get to be bigger than 8 after we take the absolute value and it stays positive. So all the values that this can be in Asim are right in between negative 6 and 10. And to find that, we just identified, first of all, that this was an, a less than or a less than or equal to, so we knew it was going to be a range of values that included and wasn't going in both directions. And then we just had to find the two numbers that represented the biggest value it could be, in this case 10, and the smallest, the most negative value it could be, in this case negative 6, and then shade all the numbers in between. 